Hello guys, it is me, Pink Love Sims, and I'm here with a visual novel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute my music down. It's pretty loud. And, um, yeah. So, as you can see, I have to buy the, um, a version, but we can play a little bit of the free version, and then when I have to buy it, I'll buy it, and then we can continue. So, I know it's weird seeing a visual novel on my channel, but I kind of want something different, like, not The Sims, but something a little bit different, like a visual novel. So, as you can see, yeah. So, we have these two characters who we can choose, so we can go start. I can play that a little bit. So, we can pick him, which he is a... Max plan is to stay in school long enough to save up enough money through part-time jobs to get by without his parents' financial support. Then drop out and start a pop rock band. On the other hand, Annie thinks that college could be the fresh start she needs to break out of her shell. Her goal is to make at least three new friends while keeping her grades up. So, I want to play as Annie because I'm a girl. And I kind of connect with Annie. Well, I'm not that shy, but I am pretty shy. So I'm going to play Annie, and um, let's start this. Week 1, Thursday. Let's see your stats. So we got Isabella. Yeah, Sally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. So, choose a simulation gameplay difficulty. It will only affect how quickly you improve the stats, but nothing else. So let's do... I'm playing on easy, so it won't be that hard. So, <clears throat> let's start this. Ah, college, a glorious new world filled to the brim with opportunities for education, community service, and networking. Oh, and also absolutely, absolutely soul-shaking, terrifying. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, <clears throat> I'm just, this is the first time doing this, so sorry. The population of my hometown is around 5,000. Until now, the farthest I've been from home is 10 miles. And that was to stay with my grandparents while our house was getting fumigated. I have a hard time looking strangers in the eye, let alone talking to them. You may wonder what a shy small town girl like me is doing at Liberty University, the third largest school in the state. I'm starting to wonder that myself. I thought I wanted to get out of my comfort zone, but this might be too much. As I walk down the street, I feel like everyone is staring at me. Okay, deep breath. Relax, smile naturally when you make eye contact. It's only a short distance to the place I'll be staying for the rest of the year. I'm living in the house on campus. It's a little more expensive, but most of my tuition is covered through scholarships anyway, and dorm living sounds loud and chaotic, the opposite of what I want. I think it'll be worth the investment. <clears throat> Are you Annie? A cute, well-dressed young man stands at the door of my house holding a bundle of papers in his hand. This must be Ere. Deep breaths. Yes, yes. <clears throat> my name is Dominic. I'm the ERA of Fort Latin House. Hi, hi, I'm Annie. Come on in and I have and have a seat. I'll start the orientation in a few minutes. Um, thank you. I'm trying not to think about how often I'm looking at the floor. Just another thing to work on this year. I'm about to step inside when Wham. I'm knocked to the ground by someone barely barreling past me. Whoops. Wait. <clears throat> sorry, that was bad way. Whoops, sorry. She keeps running into the house. Hey, Isabel, I can't believe she just he gives me a look of concern and holds out his hand. I'm so sorry. That was incredibly rude of her. Are you alright? Can you stand? I think so. I take his hand and try to stand up. I didn't twist my ankle, but that still kind of hurt. I had a hard time thinking of anything that would have justified running that fast, let alone not having time to stop and apologize. Hi, is everything in this house like this? Oh, not at all, he hesitates. Well, everyone has their 
eccentricities, but they're not all like Isabel, I swear. I would have quit this gig ages ago if they were. He gives me a reassuring smile. I want to make sure everyone here has a good living experience, so if anything's bothering you, just come talk to me. The th thank you, again. I'm glad there's at least one person here I can talk to. Dominica seems very kind. Finally, I enter the house and be called home for the next year. The first floor is huge. I can immediately see an oversized couch facing a nice big screen TV. There's also some kind of breakfast nook with a big table, and an area with several bookshelves surrounding a bunch of comfortable looking chairs. I sit on the couch and take a book out of my purse. I love books of all fl flavors. <clears throat> Wow, that's weird. At the moment, I've got a rather promising fancy novel to start. Before I can get too far into the story, though, Dominican comes back, a young man with spike hair swaggering in after him. Tall, handsome, bad boy vibe. The kind of boy my parents always warned me to stay away from, despite not actually having someone like him in a 70-mile radius. Even when they're standing next to each other, he and Dominica seem like they're from parallel worlds. Um, <clears throat> Sup, I'm Max. Annie. Just as I thought, it's hard to look him in the eye. At least I maintained eye contact for a moment. Hey, no need to be shy. Anyone sitting here? <clears throat> Why don't you take a seat over there? Dominican points to the opposite end of the couch. What? I can sit next to her. It's better that you both have more space. Bull, you just want to have her to yourself. Dominica slams a packet of paper in front of Max with surprising force. Here are the house rules. He walks over to me and hands me a packet as well. More. Duh. One second. Duh. Guess Max just irritates him. Let's go over them. No, 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 sorry. Let's go over them together. Annie would like to. St oh my god, I'm so sorry, guys. <clears throat> Again. That voice is so hard to do. Let's go over them together. Annie, would you like to start? Uh, okay. There shall be n first. There shall be no consumption, storage, or sale of alcoholic beverages or illegal drugs in the housing area. Nor shall any underage person be in the housing area while under the influence of the aforementioned substances. Students found in violation of this regulation are subject to dismissal from the housing area and remittance on unusual rent on the terms of the contract. I have never touched a jar of liquor in my life. I should have to worry about this rule. I shouldn't have to worry about this rule. There shall be no pets housed in or around the building. That's too bad. A hamster might have been nice. Oh well, I should probably concentrate on school anyway. I'll go next. The sidewalk, entries, and stairwells of this building shall not be obstructed or used for any other purpose than for entering and exiting the respective areas of the house. 4. No students shall interfere in any manner with any portion of the heating and lighting apparatus or fire protection equipment in or about the house. There will be no flame of materials or explosives stored in or about in the, about the housing area. Blantly causing fire hazards? They only put rules in after someone's done something dumb? I'm really having second thoughts about this place. Now Max. Now Max what? Read the next two. Read the next two what? Read the next two rules, please. Well, since you asked so nice. 5. Students shall not play musical equipment or instruments at such hours at such volume as to disturb other students in the dormitories. Well, that's good. I hate when a sleep schedule gets interrupted. 6. There will be no firearms or weapons permitted in or about the housing area. It is vital to Dominica that his iron fisted rule over the populace of this household be lasting and eternal, such that any rebellion can be crushed within a moment's notice. Ha ha ha, very funny. Read it properly. Hey man, I'm just reading what's on the paper. I read rule number six. Oh wow, that is actually kind of amusing. I'll be right back. Isabella! Dominica drops everything and tears up the stairs with the speed of an angry bull. Isabella, as an in Isabel that bumped into me earlier, she may have been rude, but I can't help but admire the sheer audacity it must have been taken to edit the rule sheet right under Dominican's nose. I wish I could be half as fearless as that. Dominic left so fast that he dropped 
our keys. Max stands up and tosses me mine. I just managed to catch it. Well, I'm going to bring in my gear, then tour the rest of this place. You coming? So with Max. Well, I did want to be more social. At the same time, I have no idea why you want me to come along when we're complete strangers. Why me? I was just thinking it'd be easier if I introduced you to everyone, because you seem kind of shy. Really? What? I'm a nice guy. I can't help but laugh, that though I really feel bad about it. Luckily, Max is grinning, so I don't think I really hurt his feelings. Okay, I'll choose to believe you. Huh? I mean, I'll come with you. Yay, five relationship points. He's still angry, but that that's something. Shoots me a gratified grin. That's the spirit. Come meet me at my room once you're done unpacking, alright? Alright. I bring my luggage up to my room. Mm, it's all pink and pretty. I had no idea what to pack for a year away from my home. So I brought as much as I could. All my clothes, old notebooks, old scrapbooks, a microwave. Why a microwave? My very tea mug, my very tea, my very tea strain, an ironing board, my sewing machine, my sewing kit, my bin of short yarn, and knitting needles. The pillows I made in 6th grade, the needle point I made in 7th grade. Oh my god, this girl's... Pictures of my grandparents, parents, and extended family, my laptop, my cell phone, charges for my laptop and cell phone, and my 50 favorite books. Max saddens into my room. I was taking longer to unpack than I thought. Wow, restraint's not really your thing, is it? I suppose I might have overdone it a little. Ah, uh, it's fine. If if one of those hoarding shows comes by, I'll know which room to send them to. Hey, it's not that bad. Kidding, kidding. You ready? Sure, let's go. There's a sweet smell and some soft ambient music coming from the room next to mine. Wonder who lives here. I knock lightly on the door. No response. Come on, give it a little more force. But, look, we don't have all day. You can blame me if they get pissed. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Take a deep breath and give the door a louder knock. Hello. Pretty blonde girl peeks out from behind the door. What is this, the sanctuary house for intensely attractive people? If so, what am I doing here? I'm beginning to feel somewhat insecure about my appearance, to say the least. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Was I disturbing you? God. Pfft, my grand's music's louder than that. No offense. The name's Max. Just moved in today. This here's Annie. Nice to meet you. Oh, you must be my new, new, new neighbors. I was wondering if anyone's living in those empty rooms. I'm Sally. I just moved in this past Friday. It's so nice to meet you. Um, thank you. Is that in incense? Oh, this is just for meditation purposes. The energy here is so hectic that I feel like there needs to be something tranquil to balance it out. Energy? Energy? Energy, you know, things like auras, the spiritual forces, connective everything in this world. Why? If there's too much of one kind of energy, then... Rakesha, get in here! Sally winces. Everything's ripples outwards from there. I'm going to keep meditating. You're welcome to join me, if you like. No, thank you. Maybe some other time. Sitting in a smoke-filled room with a complete stranger, one who seems perfectly nice, is still for outside my comfort zone. Okay, I'll see you at dinner. She waves cheerfully before shutting the door. Max shrugs as the door closes. He looks toward the yelling noises and shrugs again. He gets me to take the lead. A few steps later, I turn my head and he's nowhere to be seen. Well, I've come too close now. I can hear them loudly talking anyway. Sounds like this will be interesting. I walk further down the hall, following the sound of Isabel's outrage. The door to what I can only assume is her room is half open. I go inside to see what the commotion's about. Isabel is glaring at a young man who's acting like he's made some very regrettable decision. I hope the two of them don't fight. I've barely been there an hour. I'd hate to find out I've made a terrible mistake in living arrangements. Maybe it's not too late to get reassigned. Yet another good looker, though. He looks as though he came straight off the cover of a man's novel. I can't believe you pointed all over my dance pole. Oh, he's an exotic dancer. Oh, and this house is secretly a strip club. What have, what have I gotten myself into? I'm sorry. Wait. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Do you not like the colors? Sorry. I'm going to change it later.
It has nothing to do with the colors. I can excel with all this fresh paint on here. But it looks more vibrant, yes? No. Well, maybe a little, but I'm still mad because you should have asked before you went off and used my things in your art project. You wouldn't want me to take all your paintbrushes and tape them together to make a dance pole, would you? The guy thinks for a moment, then shakes his head. I would not mind if he did that. And there's a problem. There's such a thing as private proper. What's all this about? Rackish mess on that exercise pole. So I see. And? You're the RA. Why don't you talk to him about it? Oh, I'd love to, Isabel, but I'm afraid that ever over-regulating things here would make me too much of an iron-fisted dictator. Seriously? I'm always serious. How else would I crush rebellions? Ugh, whatever. I'm going to take a shower. Don't let the karma hit you on the way out. He spots me out the corner of his eye. Oh, Annie. I'm sorry about earlier. I sure left halfway through orientation. Did you find your way around okay? Oh, definitely. Please don't worry about it. Let me know if you need any help unpacking. I'd like to make it up to you tomorrow. To you somehow. I don't, but do you know where I could donate some things? I brought away too much. Of course. I know there are some clothes and book swaps on, com on campus. Just have to look up when, when and where they are. Dominic spent the next hour looking up dates, locations, and direction of various swap lands, along with directions to the nearest thrift stores in town. I never had a guy go so out of his way for me, though I'm sure it's just him doing his job as an RA. So I walk out of Dominic's room with a stack of helpful papers in my arms. I see the pole painting boy come out of Isabel's room, covered in considerably more paint smirched than before. Did he spend all that time cleaning up? Um, hi. At least I was louder this time, but not by much. He turns to me and presses his hand together in what I can only see with his best with gesture. Namaste, you are new, yes? Yes, yes, my name is Annie. I'm Rakesh. It is good to meet you, Annie. Thank you. Do you always... I have no idea how to phrase it tactfully. Rakesh tiles his head. Great roommates have paint on... Oh, no, no, I do not paint other people's belongings. Most of the time. Most of the time? Have you ever had an idea so strong it takes over your thoughts? When I'm inspired like that, everything is a canvas. I see. I see I may have to invest in a lock for my door. I'm trying to figure out how to tactfully ask Crash to leave my things alone when my stomach growls. Um, I try not to let it show, but suddenly I'm very aware of the smell of food coming from the kitchen. Ah, it's time for dinner. Who's cooking? Usually it is me, but today it is Sally's turn. She doesn't look particularly happy about it. Is she a bad chef? No, very good. She's just... She does not cook with any meat or milk products, not even butter. Vegan? Yes, vegan. Back home, there was no such thing as a vegan, let alone vegetarian. Meat, potatoes, convenience, store food, maybe some Chinese takeout if you wanted to be particularly fancy. I wonder what a vegan meal looks like. I walk back downstairs and into the kitchen. Sally looks up from her frying pan and gives a cheerful wave. It looks like she's cooking some kind of patty. Hello again. Dinner will be ready in just a few minutes. Oh, okay. What are you making? Oh, nothing too fancy. I know that most of the people here are omnivores, so I'm making some good old-fashioned burgers and hot dogs. Burgers and hot dogs? Wouldn't those have veggie burgers and soy dogs? Oh, they look and taste just like the real thing. You won't be able to tell the difference. Flash me a smile so bright that I could possibly doubt her sincerity. I suppose I'd take your word for it. Um, is there anything I can do to help? Oh, no, I'm all covered here. You just have a seat and don't worry about a thing. Oh, okay. I go over to the common room dining table and take a seat. Over on the couch, Dominican seems to be giving Rakesh a half-hearted lecture property rights. Rakesh smiles and nods, but I get the feeling it's not going to stick. I don't see Max yet, but I do hear what sounds like an electric guitar riff from upstairs. Crush. What was that? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> what was that? Hey, is dinner ready? Isabel comes down the stairs, fresh from the shower. She, I mean, she's wearing nothing but a towel. You, get dressed before, uh, you, get dressed before coming down here. Oh, is little Dominica getting all hot and bothered? 
At least the guy upstairs appreciated the view. She looks me over. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to stop here because my voice is getting super tired. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, please comment down below and tell me if you like the Sejo novel. Sorry if it's short, but it's my first time ever doing this. And I also told you that it's not the full version, so I don't know when it will be stopped. So, I will stop here. Hope it wasn't too long or too short. And um, tell me in the comments well, if you want to see the series be continued or not. So, so Pink Love Sims. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.